In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use ray casting to make a simple car that can detect if obstacles are blocking the road and then change lanes based on that. So as you can see, as the car is approaching the truck here, it notices that it's blocking it and it changes lanes. So ray casting is something every game developer should get very comfortable with. This is a concept you're going to use in most of your games. I use it in almost all of my games and it'll save you a lot of time. And a lot of the time, there's really no other options other than ray casting to do a lot of tasks. I'm also going to show you a very brief overview of layer mass so we can make objects that the car will actually drive through and ignore. Just like you saw the traffic pylon there where the car went right through it. So then in a real game, you can make that work with physics where the car would knock the pylon over but not actually change lanes. Let's jump right in here and get started. So the first thing we need to do is explain what a raycast is and how it works. So just like the name says, we're basically going to shoot or cast a ray from a position and check if that ray hits anything. So there won't be anything visible in the game. Rays are invisible. You, you don't see them, but they return information of what they hit. So as a demonstration, I have a little demo scene here I'm going to use. And all this does is this car is going to keep driving and if I hit space, it changes lanes when I hit space. But it doesn't do any checks, so it doesn't know if anything's in front of it. We're going to create a ray cast to see what's in front. And if anything's blocking the road, it's going to change lanes. The way the ray cast is going to work, it's kind of like if we create a cylinder here. I'm just going to move this in front of the car. Scale it down a bit. I'll make it longer and let's rotate it. Okay, so if we put this in front of the car and then I scale it up and make it say this long. This is basically what a ray cast is going to do. It's going to shoot a line from whatever position we tell it and for as far as we tell it to go. And it's going to check if it hits anything in this position. So if I just quickly make this a child of the car, and then we run the game again, this is kind of simulating our view distance. So once it hits that truck, it's going to know it collided with something and it changes lanes. Okay, delete that cylinder. With that out of the way, let's get started actually implementing this. To do that, I want to show you if we go to the help menu and then scripting reference, and this is a great way to learn about using different features of Unity like this. If we just search ray casting or ray cast, you're going to see there's multiple different kinds. There's a physics 2D ray cast, then there's a regular physics ray cast, which is the 3D one. So that's the one we're going to want to use. And if we select that, we see there's multiple different options here with various different examples. So this does get pretty confusing when you're just starting out. I'm going to explain it in the the easiest basic terms I can come up with. And then from there, you'll have the basics down that you can slowly learn to add all these different options to it. So if we look at an example here, the one I'm going to use is basically this one here. So if we look at it here, this is the raycast call. And these are all the different parameters that you can pass in. So the first thing we need is an origin is where the ray starts. And then a direction, so that's the direction the ray is going to go. And then the important one here is this hit info. This is what's going to actually save the information of what it collides with, where that hit takes place. And I'm going to explain that more in a bit here. So let's focus on that as well. We're going to use a distance because we don't need to send the ray as far out into the screen as it can go. We just want a, a short distance for our car view. So let's focus on these four here. If we look at this example, we see physics.raycast is put inside an if statement. And that's because if we look here, it shows it's a public static bool. So it returns a Boolean value. What that means is it's going to return either true or false. So when you shoot this ray, if it collides with anything that has a collider, it's going to return true. And it's going to return true as soon as it hits the first one. It's not going to keep shooting past it. And if it goes to the distance that we pass in here, and it doesn't hit anything, then it returns false. So we can just make an if statement very similar to this one. And I'm actually just going to copy and paste this code in. So I'm going to copy this. And if I go back to the game, I have a very simple car controller here. 
And like I showed, all this does is it constantly moves forward. And if I hit space, it's going to change lanes. And it's not important how this works for this example, but if you did want to mimic this, this is the code here. And here is the update method. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paste this code in here. I paste it in an extra curly bracket there. So now what we're doing is we're doing a physics raycast starting from transform.position. And the direction is this vector three dot down basically because it has a negative sign. We're going to change that here. We actually want to use transform dot forward with no negative. So that's going to shoot the ray forward from whatever the forward direction of our car is. And then notice it has this out hit. So if you're not familiar with what out means, when you pass in a, a variable to a method like this, it's just passing in the value of the variable that you put. So if you passed in, say, an integer, and the value in that integer was 47, you're not actually passing in the variable itself. You're just passing in the number 47. When you pass in a value with a reference like this, what this means, if anything changes inside of hit, we can still use it outside of that. So that's a bit more of a advanced topic than this video. I'm going to cover that in a different video in the future. But for now, all you really need to worry about is you need to make a raycast hit variable. You can call it anything you want and then just put out and whatever the name of that variable is. So what's happening here is we start a ray at this position. We fire it in this direction and then we store everything about where it hits in this variable here. And from the example, it shows it found an object at this distance. So I'm just going to actually change this a little bit here. I'm going to say found an object named. And then we'll put, we'll do hit. Now the hit variable stores all of the information about where the raycast hit an object, which includes the object it hit. So if you do hit, you can see all these different options in here, but we see transform. That's the transform of the object that it hit. So we can do transform.name, and that's going to print out the name of whatever we hit. So let's go back to our game and try this out here. And if we go to the console, notice it's constantly printing out that it's hitting a tire on the car. So that's the first thing it hits. So to figure out why it's constantly hitting a tire, let's go back into our code. And because we can't see rays, I'm going to show you a way that helps you visualize what's actually happening here. So I'm going to change this print to be debug.log. I just like using debug better, but it does the same thing. And then with the debug class, there's another one in here. If we do debug.drawRay, it's going to actually let us draw a ray in the scene view so we can see what the ray looks like and what direction it's going. So let's do debug.drawRay. And then if we look, it needs a start position and a direction. So we can actually just copy this right here and just paste it in. And then if we put one more comma here, you can see it also lets us pick a color. So I'm just going to do color.red just so it's a bit more visible. Now let's see what our ray is doing here. Okay, so you don't see it in the game view, but if we pause the game and go and look in our scene view, if we go to our car, we're not seeing a ray here at all. And the reason we're not seeing this is because this direction is only one unit long. And that's how it's going to display the ray. So let's just make it a bit longer. Let's times that by 20. And now if we go back in here, let's run it one more time. Pause the game. And now we see this ray is being drawn. So we can see it's starting from the middle of the car and it's shooting out right on the ground. So this might not be the, the best position for this ray. We might want to place it right in front of the car and a bit higher up. So it actually hits something here. So on the car, I'm just going to create an empty game object. I'm going to call this raycast position. Now I'm going to just position this where I want it. 
So right about here is where I'm gonna gonna shoot the ray out from. And to mention, the Raycast is only going to pick up things that have a collider. If they have no collider, like you can see, I, I have an object here that's actually the headlights. This object, it only has a mesh, no collider. So the Raycast is not going to hit this at all. It's going to ignore it completely. Same with when the game's running, there's a particle system playing some raindrops. None of those have colliders, so we're not going to worry about hitting that. Okay, so we just have to go into our code. We need to add, I'm gonna add a serialized field, private transform, I'll call this ray origin. I'm gonna copy that and for the ray's start position, I'm gonna do ray origin. I'm gonna do that both in the ray cast and the draw ray, and then we gotta do dot position. Okay, so I'm going to select my car. I got to drag in this ray position. Now let's see how this works. So if I pause it now, I look in the scene. So this looks a lot better now. This is the ray that we have. And that distance, we might want to shorten that. That's only, remember, this is only the distance of the draw ray, not the ray itself. The ray itself is actually shooting all the way out. So you can see it's already hitting something. It's hitting the rear bumper of that truck up there, even though this ray is not touching it. So let's go back into our code and let's fix that as well. If we go into our ray cast, after the out hit, if we put a comma, we can actually add a distance here. So I'm going to make another variable here. I'm just going to make this one private. I'm going to do private float. We'll call this ray, ray distance. And I want it a bit shorter than what we had in there. So I'm going to do, maybe I'll try 13. So now if I add a comma here, I can put in ray distance. And notice this is another type of ray cast we can do where it takes in the origin the direction, the hit info, and the distance. And this is probably the most common raycast you're usually gonna do. I would say at least 90% of the raycasts I do is usually this one right here. So position, direction, the hit, and the distance. And I'm gonna replace this with ray distance. So now our draw ray and our ray itself are gonna be the same length. So notice now we're not hitting anything yet until we get close. Then it shows the rear bumper. Okay, so that's working. So what we can do is my code where I have, if I hit space, it's gonna do is moving lanes equals true, which triggers the lane to move. Let's add that here instead. So now once that ray cast hits anything, it's gonna tell the car to move over into the next lane. Okay, so there it hit it, told it to move, and it should do it for this one too. There we go, again, so that's working there. Okay, so that's the main concept of ray casting and how to actually make it work. So now that we have that working, one thing I wanna show about this. Now I did mention the ray will hit anything that has a collider on it. So in the example we're using here, anything with a collider blocking this road is gonna trigger the car to move. So as an example, I'm gonna take this traffic cone here and I'm just gonna scale it up a little just so it for sure hits the, the ray. Now, if I run the game, so notice it avoided that traffic cone and it, it picked up, it hit the barrier. So what if you wanted something to happen where say these traffic cones, you wanted the car to hit them and in this case, I don't have physics enabled on the objects, but if you did, say you wanted the car to hit any traffic cones and make them bounce out of the way and only avoid cars. We can't do it like this because the ray is going to detect any collision it has and tell the car to move. So to be able to control what the ray actually hits, we need to use what's called a layer mask. So if I go back to our car, let's go to our script here. I'm gonna make another variable up here and I'm gonna make this one serialized field as well so it shows up in the inspector. I'm gonna do private layer mask 
I'm going to call this collision layer mask. So this is going to be anything that we collide with. Now, if we go back to our physics.raycast call here, if we put a comma, we can put another thing in here. Notice it's got here a layer mask. So if we put the collision layer mask in here, now it's going to use this layer mask when doing the, the raycast. If you're not familiar with what layers are, you may want to check another video. I'm going to create one shortly on covering layers as well. But layers is where you can basically set different objects in your scene to be grouped on a separate layer. So only certain layers interact with other ones. And you can see there's a layer here called default. So what we can do is click on this layer. I'm going to create another layer. Just click add layer. And I'm going to type in another one. I'm going to call this, you know, I'm just going to call it collisions. So now if I go and select this traffic cone, notice the layer is default. I'm going to leave that as it is. But let's go and select this truck. And I'm going to select in the layer. I'm going to select collisions. It's going to ask if you want to add this to all children. Yes, I do in this case. Now I'm going to go and do the same with the boat and this truck. Okay, so I'm going to set this to collisions. Okay, so now those objects are on the collisions layer, but our pile in it or our traffic cone is not. We need to select the car again, which has my car script. And now notice because I use serialized field, that makes the variable show up in the inspector. For a layer mask, you get this little drop down menu. So if you click on this, you see right now nothing is selected. So our raycast is going to use nothing as the layer. So by default, if I run this right now, notice it's not colliding with anything because it doesn't use any layers. It's, it's not checking anything. If I set this to everything, it's going to check anything it collides with. But if I set this to just collisions, and you can check multiple objects here. You can see you can have multiple layers. If I select only collisions, that means when this raycast shoots out, it's only going to detect anything that's on that collision layer. So if there's an object in between, such as this pylon here, that's not on the collision layer, that raycast does not care and it's going to go right through it. So let's try this out. We're just going to drive through the pylon because we don't have physics, but notice it didn't move. Now it detects this car and it moved. Now it detects the boat and it moves. Now that's just the bare basics of raycasting, but that should be enough to get you starting to go with it. When I started using raycasts, they were very confusing. I found I didn't use them because I didn't fully understand them. So I hope this video does help clear that up a bit and clarify it. Raycasting is something I use in almost all of my games now. A lot of the time you're using constant raycasting for various different objects and different scenarios of different things you want to do. To do the same thing without raycasting is usually very difficult or sometimes impossible. And I did find I used to try to avoid it a lot because I didn't understand them. Once I understood them, it made creating a lot of games and even just quick prototypes much easier. So I suggest practice with these. Use this simple concept to get the hang of it first. And then once you get used to that, start going through the scripting reference and find all the other different options for raycast. There are tons of different things you can do with them. This is only the tip of it. Okay, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope this helped out.